Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. The late son of Jackson Mayor Chokwe Lumumba, Chokwe Antar Lumumba, came in second place in the election to replace his father and is now set for a runoff on April 22nd. Now joining us to discuss this is Kali Nkuno. He is the coordinator of special projects and external funding for the late mayor, Chokwe Lumumba, in Jackson, Mississippi. He's the author of Let Your Motto Be Resistance, co-author of Operation Ghetto Storm. He's an organizer with the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement, former co-director of the U.S. Human Rights Network, and served as the former executive director of the People's Hurricane Relief Fund based in New Orleans. He currently resides in Jackson, Mississippi. Thanks so much for joining us again, Kali. Thank you for having me. So, Kali, uh, give us an update on what's been happening in Jackson. Well, one thing just to, uh, to note that some of the tallies are still coming in. But as of the uh, close of the polls on Tuesday, uh, April 8th, uh, Chokwe Antar was actually in the lead, but by a mere 10 votes. So uh, that gives you a sense of how tight this race uh, was with all of the candidates who were in it. There were a total of uh, roughly 15, uh, most of whom uh, barely registered, but there were uh, two other significant folks who placed uh, fairly well. And just to note who they are for the audience to get some context, uh, that was Councilman uh, Melvin Priester and uh, Councilwoman Margaret Barrett Simone. Uh, they placed 15% uh, respective uh, for, for Melvin and 11 for Margaret Barrett Simone. And uh, Antar uh, Lumumba and uh, Councilman Yarber, who placed one and two, uh, respectfully got 31% of the vote. So when we going into uh, April 22nd for the final uh, uh, election, the runoff election. We're expecting a very tight race. Uh, we expect it to be very hard, hard fought. Uh, we expect it to be uh, a real highlight and a contrast to the various issues and the various political agendas that are at play here uh, in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, but ultimately just want the audience to know just in uh, uh, our opinion uh, and this being that of uh, uh, the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement and the, the People's Assembly and, and related forces here in Jackson, uh, we do expect Antar uh, to win. But what I think this really highlights is uh, 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 with the special election uh, that the competing uh, versions, if you would, of the future uh, of Jackson are becoming more clear, uh, more distinct and, and more concrete. And that is really what we're going to push. And this election really is, I think, a very important one for the city of Jackson is going to really determine what the future looks like in the city for the next 20 years. And I say that because uh, the mandate uh, that we've talked about on the show previously, the mandate around some of the infrastructure repairs uh, that are being forced on uh, the city in many respects by the federal government, the EPA in particular, uh, and the state government uh, around some of the water treatment, the sewage, uh, the water rates, and some of the other infrastructure repair work. Uh, means that however this is carried out in finance from this administration going forward is really going to determine a lot of the, the long term, in this case, I mean, uh, next 20 to 50 year economic trajectory of the city. So uh, there's really, you know, is it going to go uh, and going to follow the kind of normal script of uh, a neoliberal orientation of, of privatization, more privatization of government services, uh, more bringing in uh, international corporations uh, and more gentrification into the city. That's one uh, version that you can look at that I, I think is, is clearly articulated and represented in the case of uh, Councilman Tony Arbor and, and his campaign uh, and its focus. And then you have uh, the vision of transformation that the late mayor Lumumba uh, was pushing forward as expressed in the Jackson Rising statement and which is being upheld and, and uh, continuing to be advanced by Chokwe Antar Lumumba and uh, the People's Assembly and the People's Campaign. So that's really kind of a quick snapshot of uh, what's happening. But you know, we got uh, at this point a week and a half of some real hard campaigning, trying to get out the vote, trying to do more work in educating folks and really uh, uh, trying to dig in deep, particularly in the working class neighborhoods uh, in the city of Jackson for a greater and stronger turnout. Uh, and just making sure that folks don't understand that, you know, it's more than a, uh, popularity contest. I think if it was just that, uh, Antar would have won outright. Uh, but in the form of democracy, that's uh, quote unquote democracy that's practiced here in Jackson, 
um, you know, you really got to make sure that the voters turn out. And so that's a, that's a critical piece of what we're going to be working on. And, uh, and colleagues, uh, and one last thing, oh, sorry, uh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, you know, that we're really going to be watching uh, in light of some of the, the recent Supreme Court uh, rulings around campaign finance is paying some real close attention on uh, the resources that come in to finance this election, even though it's a very short period. Uh, we're going to be studying that real closely because I think it's going to be a clear uh, indication to what extent uh, forced on a, on a kind of a regional level and a national level uh, are willing to tolerate, if you would, an experiment of this of this nature. And Kali, uh, as we discussed um, in your last appearance on The Real News, regardless of who is the next mayor of Jackson, uh, the hard uh, grass uh, work on the grassroots that was being done before um, Chokwe was the, the previous mayor uh, mm -hmm. before his passing, that's still going to be going on. And, uh, you know, we know this Jackson Rising Conference is coming up in just a few weeks as well um, in early May. Um, so talk about a little bit about um, an update on that, what people can expect, and uh, the other organizing work that's going on um, in, in Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that part is moving hard and fast. Uh, the Jackson Rising Conference is coming together fairly well, despite all of these challenges uh, that we face with the mayor's death, uh, uh, with his campaign, and how much uh, time and energy and effort so many forces have to put into that to, to have a favorable outcome. But it's moving forward. Uh, to reiterate, it's May 2nd through 4th here in Jackson, Mississippi. And what folks can really uh, expect uh, is some detailed training and a sharing of experience around how to build cooperatives, how to build democratic workspaces, how to build an equitable economy, how to transform the economy through uh, the solidarity economy and related practices. That's going to be really at the heart. And we're starting to give more of a focus uh, on the after, the next steps. What are the next steps going to be uh, to continue this work, to continue this vision? So we've been re-gearing the conference even since we last spoke uh, to really give them more focus and attention. Uh, and so out of that, uh, there's already some extensive discussions that are taking place on the ground around building a network of, of cooperatives, or at least starting to float those ideas so that their work can be carried forward, uh, whether Antar wins or whether he doesn't. So that's a critical piece that's going to be uh, on the horizon. And there's a network that's coming together called Cooperation Jackson to really push that vision forward. Uh, and so that's an, a, a critical and exciting piece of the work. Um, that's taking place. So we're going to be looking forward uh, to asking everyone out in, in you know, the national community uh, to support us on. Uh, we're also going to have a good number of national, international guests coming through uh, to really share their experiences uh, and to really help us build the type of national and international uh, support networks we're going to need to kind of weather the storm, uh, regardless of whether, again, whether Antar wins or whether he loses. Uh, if he wins, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, pressure uh, still to go in a different direction, uh, if you would, from the same multinational corporations that uh, are supporting some of the other candidates, uh, for instance, because uh, they're still going to want a piece of uh, all of this pie that's, that's about to be sliced up in one way or another with the infrastructure repair work. So that's not going to go away uh, just because Antar wins. But should he lose, uh, we know we're going to have a major up here battle. But I believe the community... Uh, is getting prepared and getting organized to sustain that. So the international support and the national support is going to be critical. We got folks coming in uh, from, you know, uh, on the international level, we got folks coming in from Greece, uh, from Italy, from uh, Spain, from Canada. We have some folks uh, uh, tell us, uh, you know, uh, telemonitoring in or Skyping in uh, from Venezuela and Brazil. Uh, we have some folks coming in from Haiti and some other places of uh, South Africa. And on a national level, uh, uh, you know, just a plethora of organizations are coming through to support us and to share their experience and also to try to figure out how to create some new models themselves. So I'm speaking of uh, uh, folks from the National AFL, CIO are coming through. Uh, we have some representatives from United Steelworkers and Mondragon USA, uh, the Federation of Southern Cooperatives, uh, the U.S. Federation of Worker Cooperatives. Uh, Cooperation Texas, uh, you name it. There's a number of different organizations that are already pledging to coming through. So we're looking forward to looking forward to a very transformative uh, event, something that I think will not only have a major impact in uh, Jackson going forward past May, but I think in the South in general and potentially the nation 
uh, as folks really, uh, I think, begin to understand this model that we've been trying to uh, develop in advance here, uh, how it can be replicated in whole or in part in different places. And then from that, you know, how do we link up to really build a, the, the type of deep progressive movement uh, uh, struggling on many fronts of the economy uh, in terms of greater wages, you know, workers' rights, which are critical issues here in Mississippi as they are everywhere, uh, but also uh, uh, collective and cooperative ownership and how that's necessary to transform the economy. Kali Kuno, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You can follow us at The Real News on Twitter. Tweet me questions and comments at Jessel Knorr. Thank you so much for joining us.